Hey everybody, Kate here. I was out walking yesterday evening and I saw something awesome. More people out walking. Not near me, we all social distanced, uh, but people who were out and about. And I've been seeing a lot more of that since we've all been quarantined to our homes. So I think that's really awesome. Um, and I wanna remind you that the more you're on your feet, the more you're gonna notice your feet, the more you're gonna notice where they're not working well for you, and the more they're gonna start talking to you about, hey, you're giving more volume to us, we're not quite uh, being cared for in the manner that we need given that volume. So I wanna give you a couple things to do. First and foremost, uh, always get, keep a ball nearby to roll your foot on it and to roll your calves out on it. That can help with massage. Uh, if you can't get a lacrosse ball, go out and pick up a rock People always think this is a potato on my floor. It's not a potato. See? So that's got a nice edge to it. And I can stand on that. I, this is in my kitchen, usually. Um, but massage is only one part of the answer, and it's not the answer that will actually change how your feet function. So massage, passive stretching, good. Not the complete story. You have to add strengthening drills um, to your foot training to be able to make your feet strong, functional, capable, etc., etc. So I'm gonna show you one drill you can do for your foot intrinsics. It's the simplest drill to start with. It's the one everyone should be able to do. And then you'll need to bridge it past there. I have a program called Unbreakable Feet that takes you further. Um, and I also have a program called Unbreakable Body Jumpstart, which goes even further than Unbreakable Feet. So those are some options for you. But the starting point for everybody is this drill I'm gonna show you next, where we lift our big and little toes. And that is strengthening our foot intrinsic muscles. Our foot intrinsics help us have an arch to our foot. Well, three. We have three arches in our foot, not one. They should all look like an arch. Uh, it helps us have our toes point in the right direction and, and flex and extend the way they're supposed to. And it helps our foot navigate the natural pronation supination effect that happens as we move through our gait cycle. So let me show you that video of how to lift your toes and then give it a try and let me know how it goes. Okay, so the toe lifts look like this. You lift the big toe without lifting the little ones. Then you lift the little toes without lifting the big ones. And you'll do this from a standing position or you can be seated like I am right now. Big toe lift, little toes lift. While I lift the big toe, I press the little toes down. While I lift the little toes, I press the big toe down. One huge opportunity that everybody has with their toes is uh, what they do with their big toe when they lift it. Ideally, we would love to see the toe lift straight upward, fairly straight upward. A lot of us, when we lift, our toe goes towards the other toes. And so the great toe faces the little toes. You can see the difference. Straight up, going towards the little toes. We're working different muscles. When we lift this way versus this way. And so what you might need to do initially is just get the path of least resistance, which is likely to be having your toe facing towards your little toes. And then over time, start working to lift the toe straight up. Doing so requires that you actually strengthen more of the tissue down here. Uh, and I am gonna be going over some more of that in future posts, it's a little more detailed than I wanna do right now. But uh, start with lifting your big toe 10 times and then your little toe 10 times. And then once you can do that, um, maintain that, but then also add on with more foot strengthening work. 